Okay. Now, some people thought that when we talk about grace, motivation by grace, they thought that that means that people would take advantage of the grace and despise the grace of God. Now, that's not true. And uh, actually, uh, in the outline that I have uh, shown you, that we do have a reminder and warning from the law, from the commandments each time. And I'll show you in a moment that uh, it's not just grace, but we also have warning. But the grace of God should be the main motivation. That's the main point. Uh, Christians should not be serving God because of fear, but we should be serving God because God is so gracious. God is so good and God is happy with us. So we should be serving God because uh, he is so good, He is so gracious, and everything I do for God, God will be very happy. Now today, we'll talk about how to motivate people to turn away from sins. There are many people, they think that if we live in grace, then people will just take advantage of God's grace and they continue to live in sin, like here, telling lies, you know, telling, tell a lie once, and all your truths become questionable. And then people would question uh, your truths when you, even when you tell the truth. And, or lust, many people live in lust uh, when they see beautiful women or they always think about women or have, uh, want to have sex or gossip or steal, uh, whatever they do. Now, I want to say this, that, you know, uh, Global Fire Missions Ministries ha has helped uh, so many groups to buy equipment to watch my training so that you will be benefit from the training and this is God's money and if we don't you know um, we get the equipment but we don't use it according to the instruction that could be stealing in the sight of God so we want to be faithful in the use of our resources all the resource is from God and we say, yes, I received this. I want to use it faithfully. I want to be faithful in every way. And I don't want to steal any money. Because if we steal from God, that there can be very serious consequence. Okay, now I want to say again that the reason why we have God's grace and God's law to motivate people. Now, God's law means commandment. That because God has two aspects two aspects of his nature. Uh, his nature, of course, you know, most people know is that God is love, but his another nature is God is holy. That in him there is no darkness, no sin, and he cannot stand any sin. God cannot stand any sin. So when someone tell lies or uh, uh, have lust or cheat or uh, is unfaithful, uh, what happened is God cannot stand up. When a person is, has sin in his heart and is not repentant, God is not happy. God, God cannot have a close relationship with that person. Okay? And then holiness is beautiful. Now many people don't think that holiness is beautiful. They think that it's very strict. But actually it's beautiful because one day you go to heaven, it will be very beautiful there. People will, will love each other, they care for each other, they will be joyful, and everything is perfect. And heaven is beautiful. So holiness is beautiful. If your family has holiness, that all your fam family members love each other and care for each other, and is kind to each other, and is honest with each other, then the family is beautiful. And if a church is full of love and no, there is no cheating, no lying, no t uh, uh, gossiping, it's beautiful. So we understand everything from God is beautiful, including His holiness and His love. And heaven is beautiful. And men cannot reach the standard of God. So we cannot reach the holiness of God. And God must punish sinners. So God has to prepare His salvation for us. But the fact is, God cannot accept any kind of sin. So any kind of sin we have, we must repent and ask God to forgive us. 
Uh, if a person is not repentant, for instance, now he might be faithful in doing evangelism, he might be faithful in other things, but he steals money from the church, but he tells lies, but he uh, hurt other people, then God is not happy with the person. That, that those sins, if he's not repentant, can take away his salvation. Now we're not saved by doing good. We're saved by grace through faith. When we trust in Jesus as our Savior, but real faith will always bear fruit. Okay, and then uh, God must punish sinners uh, and discipline Christians who are not repentant. He has to. He has to punish and discipline Christians who are not faithful, who continue to sin without repentance. And He has to prepare hell for those who don't want to take His salvation. And He requires us to be holy. He wants us to be holy. Without holiness, we cannot come to God. So we must have the holiness of Jesus Christ, and then we want to live in holiness. If a person lives in sin every day, he cannot have a close relationship with God. Okay, And then he will discipline and punish unrepentant sinners. And then God is love. He has, this is, should be has, compassion on us. He cares about us. He doesn't want people lost. He sent Jesus to die for us, to give us salvation. And He sent us the Holy Spirit to help us. And He accepts us totally. He wants to be with us. He wants to strengthen us. And He has a wonderful plan for us. He, when we love Him, will go into the wonderful plan of God which is perfect. And He wants to build up our lives to a higher level. And He wants to give us all kinds of gifts, spiritual gifts and physical gifts. Every kind of gifts, every kind of opportunity. He wants to bless us when we love Him. He wants to reward us. So we want to balance this too. Some people just live in under the holiness of God, but actually they are living in fear because they cannot reach the standard of holiness of God. And they, they constantly live in fear or they will accuse other people. And then there are some people who only, only live in God's love and then they don't repent of their sins. Both don't work. It doesn't work. We have to live in uh, God's love and His holiness. And we, in our preaching, we have to have a balance Holiness and love of God. That the, but the main motivation from the Bible we see that is always God's grace, grace and love. And, and we should discern God's grace and His law, which has two main functions. God's grace is that He loves us, He accepts us. God's grace means what He does to bless us. He accepts us, He cares about us. He provides for us. He has a plan for us. And God gives us strength, gifts, and opportunities. And God exalts us. And God rewards us. So these are His grace. And then law, this is what we do. So I use green color. It's like the leaves of the tree that is growing. So when we have Jesus Christ, we want to grow. And this are the things we should do. We love God, we love people, we forsake sins, we pursue holiness, we love our family, we have compassion on people, we do evangelism, we build up spiritual life, build up, and we build up the church. And it, these are things we do. We do. And grace is what God does. So when we talk about grace, it's always God is the subject. God does this for us, to bless us. Now, and then there is a warning. Now, this is also what God does, but this is punishment and discipline. Okay, there is a warning that God will discipline those Christians who don't repent. And He will punish also. And sin can destroy family life, our life, church, and the future. And we lose peace and self-image. So when we live in sin, we'll lose the peace of God and we'll lose our healthy self-image. And then Satan will come to steal, kill, and destroy. 
And the worst scenario is that people can lose salvation. So we should understand this. Three, God's grace uh, is what God does to bless us. Okay, Warning is what God does to discipline and punish us and what Satan would come to do to destroy us. And the law is what we should do. Now, I want to say that the law of God is also good. I'm not saying only God's grace is good. His law is good. When we obey His law, our life will be beautiful. His law is good. The point is, when we cannot obey Him, then the law will accuse. Then we need the forgiveness of God to forgive us of all our sins. And then we can continue to obey Him. So for our whole lifetime, we should say, Yes, God loves me so much, I want to obey Him, I want to follow Him, I want to glorify Him, I want to do everything according to His will, and then God will be happy and God will bless us. So, we need to live in God's grace, at the same time we want to obey God's law. If anyone willfully disobey God, there will always be destructive consequences. There will be destruction. Okay, and then God very often gives us promises of grace when He tells us to do something. So God, every time, you know, I would say every commandment He has in the Bible, when you look through the whole Bible, there are promises of blessings. But not every verse has promises of God. Not every verse. There are some Bible verses that don't have the promise of God. But when you look uh, through the whole Bible, you see that when we obey God, very clear. Jesus said that when you obey Him, blessed are these people. So when we obey Him in every way, in any way, God is happy and He will bless us. So He gives us promise, promises of grace when He tells us to do something. When we study the Bible, we find that very often when God tells us what to do, He gives us promises of help. He promised to help in times of need. He acknowledges our faith in Him. He acknowledges our uh, uh, trust in Him, our love in Him, for Him. And He gives us strength. He accepts us. He provides for us and He rewards us. So He, he always promises. God always promises to help us, to bless us. We should use this promises to motivate ourselves and others to obey God. So we should motivate people by God's promises, His grace. He promised to do these things when we obey Him. But many people just tell people what to do or use criticism to motivate people to change. So this is not biblical. Some people just say, oh, you have to do this. If not, God will punish you. Now that is true, but that should not be our main motivation. If we just tell people, okay, you have to do this, you have to do that. Uh, if not, you won't get the blessings of God. Uh, and then if not, God will punish you. Then people will be just living as slaves. In Romans, it says that we have the spirit of sonship, of a son, that we can enjoy the Father. We can cry out Abba, Father. We can enjoy Him. We don't live as slaves. Now, at the same time, there is a reminder of the law. There is a warning of the law. But when there is a warning of the law, it doesn't mean that, that uh, we live in fear. Okay, uh, so we understand that we should use God's grace to promise His promises to motivate people. And this is a sermon uh, that sermon can include these points to motivate people. And then, now for uh, all the... Uh, pastors, uh, you want to do the assignments or any lay person who want to do the assignment. At this point, I want you to follow this outline. It's not very, very difficult. It's not very difficult. It's, I, I give clearly what to do. First, we want to interpret the Bible passage. Explain what, it, what the Bible passage says. And then, uh, especially some keywords and some difficult to explain passages, we should explain it. And then introduction. And then in, in the introduction, we can. Now, there are different ways of, to do outline, but this is one way. But I want you to learn this way first before you use other ways. And even when you use other ways, I hope you always include 3, 5, and 6, which 
we'll go to in a moment. Okay, so introduction how people don't live out and do live out gets this particular nature of God. For instance, God's love. If we want to preach about God's love, how we can have God's love and love people, then uh, the, the, the introduction could be that many Christians don't love other people. For instance, um, there are many Christians, they see newcomers coming to the church, they don't welcome them, they don't help them. And uh, they are critical of other people. They, they, they want to prove that they themselves are better than others. These are ways that they are not, not loving people. So there are, uh, and there are many people, they say, I don't want to go to church anymore because I've been hurt in churches. That, so that, that people can get hurt in a church if, they, if the people in the church don't have love. So it's a fact that many Christians don't live out God's love. But there are some Christians who live out God's love and really care for people. And, and they really show the life of God. And then three, God's nature and grace that uh, according to the passage now here it's God's love that for instance God is love God gives us love and God re reward us when we love so his nature and his grace he uh, in every um, theme we can find God's nature and grace sometimes not from the passage but from the whole Bible for instance, here we talk about God's love and our love for other people. First, God is love and God gives us love. When we are saved, we have the motivation to love other people. And God will reward us when we love, when we love God and love people. And then why people don't live out this particular nature of God? For instance, people are selfish. Now, why do I include this part? Because uh, we want to tell the reason why. Now, the difference between two and four, two is just saying it's a fact that many Christians don't have love for others. And then four is analyzing why, why some Christians don't have love. And then later we will talk about how we can have love. So why people don't live out this particular nature? Because people are selfish. They just think about themselves. They think of love Loving people is losing something, losing, they have to give time, give money, give effort to help other people. So they think that loving other people will bring them loss. Or they just, or maybe they are angry with people, they uh, dislike people, they cannot forgive people, so they cannot love other people. So we can think from the Bible and also from our daily life, why some people don't love others. To, so so that people know, so people can examine ourselves. So as a preacher, we examine ourselves and examine other people and find out why people don't love, why people don't have joy, why people don't have strength, why people don't do evangelism, what are the reasons. And then here is the law, reminder and warning from God's commandment. For instance, he, he who does not love abides in death, 1 John three fourteen, When he doesn't love, uh, then he abides in death. And then how to live out this particular nature of God. So how can we have love? That we want to think about God's love, how he loves us, how, how he has blessed us, how he has given us eternal life, how he uh, sent Jesus to die for us and he sent the Holy Spirit to move in our heart, that he never give up on us, he, that he continue to help us and whenever we do any little thing for God, He will give us reward. Whenever we pray to Him, He will give us uh, joy and peace. All these are uh, how, when we think about how God loves us. It will motivate us to love other people. And then we can learn there are different... So as a preacher, we want to think about what what are some ways that we can tell people that when they follow this then they will learn to love people more for instance they can learn from other people they can learn from the pastor from other leaders from people who love other people and observe why they love people and how they love people and God has given the nature of, of uh, to mothers 
that mothers really love the children naturally. Now, of course, there are mothers who hurt the children. It's true. But uh, that doesn't exclude that the fact that mothers do love the children. So we look at mothers, how they love the children. We learn from them why they have so much love. So can we have love for God's people? Now, another reason and how we can overcome that is uh, that people don't have a sense of belonging. For instance, mother loves the children because the children be belong to them. They are their, ch their children. So when we say, wow, this is God's family. And whatever I do to the Christians, God is very happy with me and He will reward me. So I, I have a strong sense of belonging in a church. The body of Christ is the, uh, it belongs to Christ and I am a part of the body of Christ. And when I love God, love Jesus, I love the people, God is very happy with me. And then how? Actually how? So we... We greet people, we are nice to people, we forgive people, we, we, uh, we are nice to them, we help them, we don't make them feel unhappy, but we, even when we see that they have problems, we tell them, God has a wonderful plan in your life. God wants to do great things in your life. So we want to think about how. Now, there are some people who, who preach and they don't tell people what to do. They just say, forgive, forgive people, forgive people. But how? That we need to t tell people how. And then seven, challenge people. Challenge. So now we know that God is love and God has loved us so much. And God is happy with us when we love other people. So can we start to love? And when we start to love, God is very happy. Can we start to love each other right now? Look at the people next to you. And pray for the person and bless the person and be kind to the person and look at your your spouse your children and love them your parents love them and when you start to do that God is very happy with you okay now I, let me demonstrate with another theme uh, so that we understand this way of outline and it's not very difficult and actually when you have an outline like this this is a directional outline, I want to say. Directional, what does that mean? It has a clear direction to direct the people to follow that commandment of God, to live in God's love, to obey God in that particular way. For instance, we have a theme to forgive one another. Okay, another theme, another sermon using this outline. Uh, and then we can use uh, Matthew 6 that Jesus said that, you know, when we forgive other people then the Father in heaven will also forgive us and when we don't forgive other people then uh, the uh, Father in heaven will not forgive us so we can uh, use that passage so we first explain it explain that yes it's true that when we forgive other people Jesus is very happy and he'll forgive us and uh, actually he forgives us first and then when we forgive people, God is very happy with us. And then, um, and Jesus also said, when we don't forgive other people, then the Father will not forgive us. So, uh, that is a warning. If we have some people that we don't forgive, and we are angry with them, then there, then, then there can be a serious consequence that God doesn't forgive us. Okay, introduction, how people don't live out and do live out this particular nature of God. Now, there are many Christians, they cannot forgive some people. Um, now, the worst situation could be that the spouse ha uh, have been unfaithful. Now, it's, it's the sin of the spouse to be unfaithful, but we still want to love them and forgive them because God is a loving God that when we forgive them there is a chance to restore the marriage even if the person doesn't want to you know for instance uh, there is a, a spouse that has an affair and then he doesn't want to repent even when he doesn't repent we still forgive them but then we have a choice if he has committed adultery we have a choice whether we want to continue the marriage uh, or not. Now, in most cases, 
Even when the other person hurt us, we still want to forgive them and continue marriage. But when there is adultery, we have a choice. Of course, the best choice is still to restore the marriage when the person is willing to give up the affair. So no matter what, even the worst scenario, we want to forgive because this is God's will. But many, many Christians don't. They, for instance, they say, I cannot forgive my pastor because he didn't do this to me. He, uh, he didn't help me. Uh, and then they f remember that. And they say, well, there's some Christians who are not nice to me. I, I don't want to see them. So this is not forgiving. And there are some Christians who forgive that I heard that, uh, that, uh, that uh, in Korea, that the first missionary went to Korea w were killed. But uh, there was one uh, pastor who was still, you know, who, uh, I'm trying to remember the story. He brought Bibles there and he was killed. Before he was killed, he was kind to the people. And, and then the people read the Bible. And then some people, they were converted. And then that started the, the revival in uh, Korea, that they start to believe in Jesus. Okay, now, God's nature and grace. God is a forgiving God. Even when we have sinned so many times, God still forgives us. You know, we... We all fall short of the glory of God. There are many times that we have sinned, but God doesn't give up on us. Actually, every Christian would have some sin. Now, I'm saying we should not sin willfully, but unintentionally we would sin. We, you know, we don't have perfect love for people that is sin. Even when we sin, God still forgives us. That is His nature. And when Jesus was crucified, first thing he prayed, he said was, Father, forgive them because they don't know what to do. And so God's nature and His grace, He continued to forgive us and He gave us the spirit of forgiveness. He, he will give us a heart to forgive. And then whenever we, forgive, he, whenever we forgive, He is very happy and He reward us. And why people cannot forgive? Because people... They hold grudges on people. They remember the bad things people do. They use the human way. The human way is that they will be angry with whoever that have offended them. Okay, the reason is, you know, we can think of different reasons. Maybe some people have been hurt from childhood and they have been angry with people. So it's hard for them to forgive others. And then warning. The warning is that if we don't forgive people, then the Father will also not forgive us. And then if the Father doesn't forgive us, then we have to go to hell. So we must forgive. And then how? How can we forgive? First, we can think about how many times God has forgiven us. We have not been faithful and yet God has forgiven us and continue to bless us. So we say, God has forgiven me so many times, I want to forgive other people. And also, we can think of these people who has hurt us, they have been hurt by other people many times. They have been hurt by people. And so they, it's hard for them to be nice to people. So when we understand that, then we have compassion on them. And then it's easier for us to forgive them. When we understand that most people in the world, they have a lot of anger. They have been hurt many times. So it's hard for them to forgive people, to love people. So we understand that and then we have compassion on them and forgive them. And, and also one great motivation is that every time I forgive, God is very, very happy with us. So these are ways that how we can start to forgive. Now even if we cannot forgive right away, we can start to pray for the strength to forgive. So this is included in how. We can pray for the strength to, to forgive, pray for the strength to understand the person, understand his problems, pray for peace. When we pray, when we praise God more, we have more peace and joy and love, and then we can forgive people. And so these are different ways that we can learn to forgive other people. And challenge, can we start to, you know, understand people, 
understand their weaknesses and then start to forgive them. Okay, so I'm demonstrating this outline is very directional. What, 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 uh, what do I mean by being directional? First, it's saying how people, they don't follow this commandment of God. They're not obeying God. And God's nature related to that. Now, we want to talk about God's nature related to that. When we talk about forgiveness, we want to talk about God's forgiveness. When we talk about loving people, then we talk about God's love. When we talk about peace in God, putting down the burdens, then we talk about how God is peaceful. Even though God has millions of things to do all the time, but yet He is very peaceful. He's capable of doing all these things. At the same time, He is very peaceful. Compared to the, to the uh, Greek mythology, the gods of the Greek, uh, of the Greek people, they, these people, they, they are human-like. They, they're like human. They, they fight. They are angry with people. So, God's nature related to forgiveness. And then why people don't forgive. And then reminder, if we don't forgive, what will happen? And then how we can forgive. So every point is related to that theme. That way people will understand why and how we should forgive or love or have peace. So any kind of theme we have, we want to follow these points. And it's not very difficult. Now, if you don't understand this, points please send it to me in the questions and then I'll answer it in the leaders group you can still send the questions and I can answer you okay now we're going to use one passage to talk about today's theme today uh, the theme would be be aware of the devil working in people's heart that <clears throat> we talk about how non-christians all live under the power of satan <clears throat> 